Hello, everyone. Welcome again to Mother and Refuge of the End Times. My name is Ron Ray, and we're it's my pleasure today to host our After the Warning webmaster, Jimmy Fifth. How are you going, Jimmy? Doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Thanks. We'll get you to start with a prayer, and then we'll introduce our special guest for today. Yeah. So uh, as uh, many of you know, I prefer to say uh, to begin things with the unity prayer. So Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, may our, dear Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts be in the same rhythm, and may our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other, and may our lips beg our Heavenly Father together to obtain mercy. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. I'm sure that many of you know that I have a very close friend that that has blessed us with joining us here today, my best friend, John Martinez. <laughs> so, <laughs> we've known each other for several years, and as soon as Ron had invited me to come on here, First thing I wanted to call was John and see if he wanted to join me someday. So finally, here he is. <laughs> Thanks for um, coming on with us, John. Thank you. So I'm not. And uh, would, would you like to give us a brief, uh, you know, just for the viewers that don't know much about you, John? Well, if well, you can uh, uh, tell uh, us a I little bit more about. You. I okay. Uh, I, I live in Texas. Uh, uh, I have my my own business, and uh, I am a Vietnam vet. And uh, I have been very fortunate that since the moment of birth, that God has been with me. And I never understood or realized is that how important each of us are to God, and we are so important to Him that uh, He is as far from us. Is the sound of a heartbeat. That's how close God is with each person that is listening and each person in this world. And I had to find out the hard way. Um, uh, I was the cradle, um, uh, a cradle Catholic, but later on, you know, uh, uh, I found out that I was a pagan Catholic. And, and what I mean by that is that I went to church to do God a favor. Um, uh, I joined different organizations like Fish Fries, and uh, so I went to Mass in just uh, so that God could give me a star, so that when I died, you know, I had all the stars. But um, <laughs> I never. I was, heard... reading, I was reading your um, your testimony online the other yes. night, and you said that you were doing you were doing God a favor by by going to Mass. So I found that a bit amusing. Yes. Yes, you know, uh, that was my thought, in, you know, uh, uh, because of my uh, my ignorance and not understanding the love and the power and the presence of God is that, uh, uh, I mean, a lot of us have the tendency to assume things and don't, don't realize that the most important thing in our life is God in our hearts, in our mind, in everything that we do is that when people look at us, is that they see uh, God penetrating through our, uh, to the way that we speak, the way that we act. And, um, and it is not easy. It's, um, it's been tough. But my journey started, you know, uh, uh, at a time that uh, uh, I was, after Vietnam, uh, I, I had PTSD and I went through a, a lot of things for a few years. And, uh, uh, and I remember when I was uh, in the military, I, um, uh, I was always able to be very successful in, in rank and so forth. And I got out. And when I got out, you know, I was broke. I, di I didn't know what to do. And so that uh, I was outside my house and I was just praying to God. You know, that is is that please help me, Lord, because I don't know what to do. It got to the point that uh, I was broke, that I had to go to the um, uh, the highway and pick up uh, uh, 
tin cans in order to sell them, you know, in order to buy food for my family. And and uh, uh, and I know that this was the need. So so uh, consequently, is that is that I prayed, and at that time, uh, uh, all I knew was two prayers: was the Our Father and the Hail Mary. And I prayed, I don't know how many of those. But uh, it all started, Ron, uh, one night without me not knowing anything. I was in bed and I was asleep. And then my wife gets up and she says, Johnny, do you see the man that is standing? I mean, uh, the man that is kneeling at your feet? I looked and there was nothing. And so that... uh, what happened so when she turned so you were in, in your bedroom at home so yes you were in your bedroom at home and your mom and your wife saw a man nearly yes at your bed praying is that right right sir. exactly right and uh, uh so i mean i had never experienced that and i thought it was a ghost or whatever you know and i thought did, did well, you see the man did you see the man not no my wife did and she described them and uh and the way they, that uh, she described it i had no idea and uh what happened uh is that that was the start of my journey and uh, uh, uh i went to my pastor um uh, uh, father tom flanagan who became bishop flanagan and i told him that i needed to know more about god you know because uh, i had an, an earning from from within me, and uh, he directed uh, directed me uh, to a charismatic prayer group. And uh, uh, now, being Catholic, and I walked into the room um, where the, uh, the 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 uh, charismatic uh, uh, a group was meeting, and they were singing, and they were singing in a strange tongue. And I said, "Oh my God, I think I made the wrong turn, and I'm in a Protestant church." And so that I walked in, but there was so much love and so much beauty that 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 I could not understand. I could not get enough of the presence of God that really filled my my whole spirit. And at that time, in the charismatic renewal, is that we had what 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 we call the Life in the Spirit seminar, and uh, um, and so that it was a seven week course. And, and I went, and, uh, um, and every week they taught us different things. But on the first day, my wife was out there looking at cards, and uh, 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 holy cards, and uh, she came back just stunned. And uh, she brought a picture of the man that was sitting, I mean, that was kneeling at the foot of my door, and I looked at it, and I didn't know what it was. It was a picture, a holy card, a part of Pio. I mean, he was praying there, and 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 I had no idea. And so that, but what happened was that th- there was the beginning of, of of my spiritual journey, and uh, uh, and 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 after uh, they prayed for us uh, to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, people need to understand that there's a difference uh, because when we are baptized, we receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit into ourselves. And uh, But this was a uh, uh, the laying of hands and the release of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And, uh, uh, and I was very happy because everybody received different gifts, the gift of tongues, the gift of prophecy, and I didn't get nothing. And I said, oh, my God, what did I do? Did God forget me? And uh, um, in being in construction, uh, I had a job uh, maybe about 60 miles from San Antonio. That's where I'm from. And and as I was driving on a highway, I was just singing, you know, uh, 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 whatever came to my mind, and I was praising God. And then all of a sudden is that my car, I mean, my truck just started to go by itself. And I was just um, like a passenger. And I heard the word of God tell me, my son, this is an area that you will live in the future. 
and it is going to be a refuge for thousands of my people will be coming from the north, from the south, from the east, and from the west. And I will prepare you, my son, to for for this time that will be coming in the future. And then, uh, I, I mean, um, I mean, I didn't even have my hand on the wheels. And so that I continued to drive and and I was just, I mean, I had tears in my eyes because I didn't know. Uh, I mean, I didn't know the the the, uh, the countryside because the first cow that I saw was at, at the San Antonio Zoo. <laughs> and I knew nothing about about life in 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 the country but but gradually is that what what happened is that things were happening in my mind and then i started uh, to pray in the gift of tongues and so that i mean i just prayed all day and then you know when i got home i told my wife and uh at first she thought i was nuts which she, uh she was probably right because i didn't know what was happening and 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 uh, uh, so that um, at the prayer group meeting, I could hardly wait to go every Wednesday. And uh, I asked the 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 uh, the prayer group leader. Uh, um, his name was Dan DeSells in San Antonio, and uh, I asked him if I could help uh, in any way, because you know, I wanted to be part of it. He said, "Yes, John, if you can come early and if you can put up the chairs." Uh, that would help me a lot. And man, that was like a gift from God uh, because there were approximately about 700 Catholics there uh, in the charismatic prayer group. And I was there for about uh, maybe for about three to four months and, and so forth. And since I speak, speak Spanish and some of the people that were there, um, I, I, I did not understand English so that in between breaks, I would interpret for them and I didn't know that I started to minister to them from English to Spanish. And uh, um, and then one night um, uh, at at the prayer meeting is that uh, 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 we have the the uh, the, uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which which many of us have, but we are so stubborn that we re refuse to allow God to unleash Him within us. And so that, uh, 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 and and what was happening is that I saw in a locution, I saw Our Lady walking among the people. And then I came up with a prophecy uh, about Our Lady talking to the prayer group. And then I stopped and I said, oh my God, I blew it. I don't even know what I said. And uh, uh, and and uh, that prayer group had been in existence for seven years, and the uh, the leader then themselves was there from the beginning, and uh, and and uh, that night um, uh, I got a call about ten o'clock, and then uh, then calls me and tells me John, the Lord has has told me that you are to take charge of the prayer group. I said, Dan, how how can that be? All, all I know how to do is to put up chairs. He said, trust God. And I did. And so that, but what happened, then I told my pastor and he was very happy for me. And I wanted to, to, uh, to, to learn more because I had a hunger to know more about God. And, 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 and then what happened is that when I became a uh, prayer group leader in San Antonio, is that we had uh, 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 five prayer groups in 125 parishes. And the first thing I did the following morning is that I called up the uh, Carex Remutus, uh, the, the, uh, the Carex, Carex Medic Renewal Center, and I spoke to uh, Father, End Father Enda McKenna. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and I told him, you know, I said, Father, is that we, I mean, I have been appointed the new prayer group leader and I offer to you everything that has been given to me because the prayer group uh, that, uh, that the Lord gave me had a music ministry, had, had, had everything already planned. And he was very happy because there was a problem between Dandy Sells and Father Enda. And I was not aware of that. So that uh, he invited me. And what happened 
was that as a prayer group leader, uh, um, um, uh, there were five of us, and uh, I was, or uh, five or six, I don't know. So that uh, he invited us to to uh, uh, to go to dinner, and uh, so I was very happy because I wanted to learn. I mean, I was seeking to learn, and uh, what happened was that I mean uh, I went in there and I felt like a, uh, like a raisin in in oatmeal. Say I don't belong here. I mean, these guys were singing in such a beautiful voice, singing and praying in tongues and and so forth. And then, I mean, I was just, I mean, enjoying it. And when it was over, uh, I, I mean, I went to my car. And then I, I, I forgot that I left my Bible inside so that I walked in. And as I was walking in, uh, Father Enda was walking out. And then Father said, John. What did you think of the prayer, uh, meeting that we had? I said, Father, it was incredible. But these people are so, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, earthly bounded that they are not worldly good because I didn't know what I I didn't learn nothing. And then and then he asked me, Okay, do you have any ideas? So um, uh, I was in graphics when I was in the military. And so I went home that night, and uh, because Father said, "Can can you see me tomorrow at nine thirty in the morning?" I said, "Yeah, Father." So I went home and I prayed, and the Lord told me to write all this information down on uh, on three uh, uh, um, cardboards. And so that I went in the following morning, and then Father uh, 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 invited me in. We talked, and. Uh, uh, and then what he said, okay, John, what are your ideas? I said, Father, and then I went ahead <laughs> by point, by point, by point, by point. And, uh, uh, and I showed him what I felt that, that was needed. And uh, uh, he stood there for about 10, 15 minutes saying nothing. And I said, oh, my God, I blew it. And then Father Enda gets up. Because he was the uh, liaison from the archbishop and was in charge of the charismatic renewal. So he gets up after 10, 15 minutes of silence, grabs my hand and shakes it and said, John, you are now the director to the charismatic renewal in the Archdiocese of San Antonio. I said, what? <laughs> I mean, I didn't know what to do, but I prayed. And I asked the Lord to guide me, and so that we had our our um, our meetings, and uh, uh, and and at the core meetings is that the Lord told me to speak to the group and to tell them that that the Lord that I believe that the Lord was telling me that we needed to rent the biggest arena in San Antonio and invite everybody to join us for, for a weekend on Pentecost. Now, we had um, uh, five per groups in 125 parishes. I visited every parish, 125, and I spoke to them about what the Lord was uh, had put in our hearts, and the group was in agreement. And so that when I went, I was invited. I mean, they, I, I was... Um, uh, 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 accepted like something new, and so that I, and and when I spoke, is that it touched the people's hearts, and so that um, at the end of about three months, everybody in the archdiocese had a hundred. We had a hundred and twenty-five prayer groups. I said, "Oh my God, what happened?" And uh, uh, and then the Lord put in my heart. You know, like I mentioned a few minutes ago, is that he wanted us to rent an arena. And uh, so we didn't have any money. And when I was walking um, uh, at night to our to our meeting, I found a quarter uh, on the ground. I picked it up and I told him what the Lord had placed in my heart. And so that I said, now we got a quarter to start with. And uh, uh, and that's where we got. And uh, this is what the Lord has placed in my heart, you discern. 
and everybody was in agreement. Mm -hmm. So that uh, uh, we rented the arena where the San Antonio Spurs played professional football, I mean, basketball. And so they, uh, and, and then for one year, everybody in the archdiocese got together and they made banners, they prepared. And then, uh, I, I mean, uh, I watched Mother Angelica and I saw all these, all these different speakers and, 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 and uh, uh, so that we decided that uh, we were going to start in town and, uh, and, and we were to invite the, the uh, non-Catholics also. So that uh, what happened is that Tony Monteo and I, uh, who was uh, a member of the prayer group, and Tony was a, he's still a, an, an incredible friend. Um, uh, uh, we were told that we were to go to the biggest non-Catholic church in San Antonio. And we were afraid because we'd never been to a Catholic, to, to a, a Protestant church, and this was the biggest. And and when we walked in there, uh, Tony and I looked at each other. You know, said, "What do we say?" And then um, uh, the the uh, assistant pastor uh, came down and just to greet us. And then as we shared what the Lord had placed in our heart, he started to cry, and there were tears. I mean, I mean, he and he said, gentlemen, please excuse me because I need to get my people. And then he got um, his his people and there were about 29, um, uh, uh, um, both men and women. They came in and then we started to share the same thing. And then they all started to cry. And I said, my God, Tony, what did we do? And uh, uh, and then. Um, um, a brother, Bud Gardner, uh, spoke to us and said, gentlemen, we were told about six months ago in prophecy and in prayer that we were going to be two men to visit us and that we were to give them and help them with everything that they asked. And the reason they were crying because they expected two Baptists to go in to Pentecostal to go in, to, I mean, two men from different denominations, and they were shocked because God sent two Catholics to them. And they, I mean, and we became friends, and uh, uh, so that uh, a, lot, a lot of people got together and they made banners. The banners were about maybe about 80 feet high uh, in the arena, and uh, uh, so... And we had never done this before as Catholic, especially me, that 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 my biggest uh, a gift was putting chairs. I said, well, I mean, uh, um, being, uh, um, how to say, uh, 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 a discipline in, in the military, in planning and so forth, is that uh, we uh, we made a plan and, and, and each diocese, had something to do and everybody was involved. And and when the time came, and this is this is this is how Satan works, because I I, I mean Jim and I had had spoken a lot, and what happened was that everything that could go wrong would go wrong. <laughs> I mean the the uh, 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 the the event on Pentecost was going to start on Friday night and all, all day Saturday and then we would end up with mass on Sunday. So on a on a Friday morning it was raining in San Antonio and I was driving and then all of a sudden I had a blowout and then my truck just spin around and I rolled over and I hit a telephone pole and the telephone pole just bounced me back to the highway in the same direction that I was going and nothing happened. And so that uh, I said, oh my God, I mean, what's going on? And and then when I got to the arena, there was a, a, a guy behind me that was, I mean, just completely infuriated at me. And I didn't know why. And he banged into my truck about four or five times until he just got away. And I said, oh Jesus. 
I mean, what is happening? And uh, so uh, uh, to make a long story short, um, uh, the, the, the arena uh, uh, held about 20,000 people. And, and uh, there were people that, that, uh, uh, that, that, that we invited, like um, uh, uh, Rob Martin, Mother Angelica, and, uh, and, and everybody agreed to come. And I said, how did this happen? And one of them was uh, Dr. David Duplessis, uh, who was the the the, uh, the president of the Pentecostal Church in the uh, throughout the whole world, and so the, he uh, accepted our, our our invitation, and they all they all said okay. And uh, then then what happened was that we were waiting to see if anybody would show up. And there were 18,000 people that came. And I said, oh, my God. I mean, I mean, God is, it is good. And there were so many healings. There were so many testimonies. There were so many people that converted. There were so many uh, 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 young men and women that had thought about going um, into the priesthood and also uh, into, into convents. And we were just shocked. And so that... And then, my, my, I mean, my life began to uh, 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 to to grow spiritually because I was learning. And uh, one of the things that happened in 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 my walk, I prayed to Our Lady, and for about six, seven months, or maybe more, is that uh, 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 is that I would see her in a locution, and she would take me aside into this beautiful garden, and then she would teach me things that I had never learned in when I was in the Catholic Church and in catechism. And one of the things that really blessed me is that uh, there was like a white picket fence in, in this beautiful valley, I mean, uh, in this beautiful park, and behind it was nothing but grass. And I asked Our Lady, I said, uh, you know, I asked her if I could go into the other side so that gently is that, you know, she took me, we got in front, and then all of a sudden there was a door, and the door opened. And when I walked in there, oh, my God, I was in heaven. Everything in there was so beautiful that the wind was singing, and the blades of grass were like velvet, just just flowing and singing and giving praises to God. I mean, I did not know that I had been taken into heaven and into what the world is going to be at the end and what the Garden of Eden was. And I was just amazed and stunned that this took place. And then we were back in, uh, we went back and I will never forget because I can still see it, and so that uh, my my journey uh, 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 started from my bedroom, and now people were asking me to talk in different places. I would uh, I I went to uh, different places around the United States, and really I didn't know what to say until I got up, and then the Lord spoke to me and touched their hearts. And, and, and uh, uh, because one of the things is that I never want to do, I never will bring attention to myself because all the glory and all the grace is to our Lord Jesus Christ because I don't have the power to heal the cockroach. And I prayed with people. And I remember one time that uh, Father Flanagan, uh, we had a, 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 a monthly healing mass and there were people from all over San Antonio that came. And many of the people that that, that we prayed with uh, is that God healed them. There was one man in particular that 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 I prayed for for his throat. And and when I did, you know, I mean, because we don't know uh, uh, what each person that comes up to us uh, is struggling with. And the following day. I get a call from this gentleman, and he was a medical doctor. 
and he thanked me for praying for him because he had been diagnosed with cancer of the larynx. And he told me, John, I have been healed. I said, oh, my God. I mean, <laughs> I, it, I mean, I was learning. I did not. What I'm sharing is not anything that I read, but the Lord told me that my ministry would be life experiences that I will be able to share and speak from my heart so that he will talk to people. And there were just hundreds of miracles that happened and that I had no idea. But I had one idea is that God was first in all things that I did. And our Blessed Mother was always with me. And the Holy Spirit guided me in all things that I did. And, and, uh, um, and, and I was amazed that, that people would, would call me and follow me. And, 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 and I didn't know what to do. I really didn't. And uh, um, uh, I remember one day that, that I was on a highway. I was driving and there was a lady behind me. That was that was honking, and uh, I, and I said, "Oh my God, I'm in San Antonio, and there's some of these people here are crazy, you know." And and uh, so uh, she was uh, 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 honking me, so so that I parked on the side of the highway, and then she got up and she uh, she hugged me and she said, "John, I want to thank you for coming and praying for my son last night." And I looked at her; I didn't want to disappoint her. But, but I, I, I mean, I never been to her house and her son was healed. Now, now the reason I am saying this is that for, for those that are listening to us, that God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, that all we need is to have the faith of a mustard seed. And we can say to this mountain, move. Because God is more concerned not what we ingest into our into our body, but what comes out, and what comes out is a person of God. Because the word of Jesus, the word of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, there is power in that name. And we in the Catholic Church have forgotten that as how important the sacraments are, how important. Is the Eucharist, adoration, the rosary. We have the greatest treasure that God could have given mankind, and it is the Holy Catholic Apostolic Church. And so that I mean, uh, and and uh, uh, when I started this, uh, in 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 uh, uh, in talking to people about coming to the uh, to the convention, and, and it was called um, a Jesus eighty one, and uh, um, and I was invited to uh, by some pastors. Uh, they were uh, from another religion. I don't I, I don't want to say which one, but they invited me. Now, me being Hispanic, I expected you know for people to be prejudiced against uh, against me, but never. Everybody has been loving and so forth. But when I walked into that studio, I felt an oppression, a hate of, 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 of what these people that had invited me and they questioned me about the Eucharist. They questioned me about the Holy Father. They questioned me about Our Lady. And I was just a baby in Christ. And, and, and I probably messed up um, uh, a lot. And uh, uh, so, so that what happened is that uh, uh, I mean, people were listening to me all over San Antonio, and I was embarrassed because I embarrassed myself because I really was not knowledge knowledgeable enough to be able to share and to answer the question. But I could feel their hate. I could feel their anger. I could, I could feel like. I mean, I was something that was not from God, but something that came out of hell. I mean, that's how they made me feel. But uh, 
but later on, as people got to know me, um, I, I was invited by by one pastor uh, from a, from a Pentecostal church because he heard the 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 the, uh, the radio broadcast, and uh, uh, and he knew many people knew how they treated me. I mean, I was just an innocent baby that really did not understand. And what happened um, is that uh, uh, um, this pastor asked me if I could speak on a on a television program that he had. It was for 30 minutes. And then by there, I was a little bit more mature and understand and understood th the power that has been given to us, to everybody, that all Catholics are given the same gift at baptism, confirmation, and 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 uh, what what happened is that uh, um, uh, is that this pastor asked me if I could talk for about thirty minutes, and I and I shared like I'm sharing now, and then he said, "Brother, can you tape an, another thirty minutes?" I said, "Yeah." So I went ahead and and uh, and I shared. And, uh, uh, and and he said, I don't want to push you, but can you share another 30 minutes? I said, yeah. So I ended up doing eight episodes, you know, and just speaking from my heart and God talking through me and touching the hearts of the people. And what happened is that he invited me to minister at his Pentecostal church. Now, here I am, a little Catholic that all he knew was put up tears, but I had something within me. I had the power and the love of the Holy Spirit, and I had God in my heart. And so that when I got up on that stage, I spoke on the Eucharist. I spoke on Our Lady. I spoke on the Holy Father. I spoke on the sacraments. And then I asked for an altar call. And there were about 300 people in that Protestant church. And I asked, and everybody came up. I said, oh, my God. I mean, what do I do? So so I prayed with them. And for those that are familiar with the charismatic renewal, know that sometimes when we lay hands on people, is that they are slain in the, in, in the spirit. And I found out that 90% of those that attended this Protestant church were ex-Catholics. And they couldn't believe me being a Catholic could would would have the courage to speak to them in a way, in a simple way that they understood. And then I was invited to other churches. And so that uh, uh, it's it's only the beginning of many things that have happened in my life. And uh, um, and I was told that I would be ministering worldwide. And I never knew how that was going to happen because, I mean, I didn't have any money. I couldn't promote myself. But then people started to call me and visit me from different parts of the United States. And uh, uh, and and they came to Fredericksburg, and that's where I live. And, uh, I mean, we prayed together and so forth. And about, about three weeks ago, no, about uh, three months ago, I get a call from a a place that I that I love, and right behind me, I've got a uh, a um, um, a photo of Our Lady of Metagorgia. And so that uh, um, what happened is that a lady um, by the name of of a uh, um, um, her last name was was Kovic, and uh, uh, she was Croatian. And she asked me if I could help her uh, uh, spread the word and the messages of Our Lady throughout the whole world. That if I could help her to um, uh, uh, to establish prayer groups where people would get the messages of Our Lady directly, and so that that came out of no place. And then uh, and and then with uh, uh, I mean. Uh, uh, with Jim uh, and you, Ron, asking me to be here with you, uh, this gives me an opportunity to share what is in my heart. 
and that is to bring people to the person of Jesus Christ. What a lot of people do not know that that Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a person of Jesus Christ. That's who we are. We are all the body of Christ. And so that there is, is uh, so much more, Ron, but I don't want to take all your time. And if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Yeah, thanks so much, um, John. That was an amazing testimony. We've got so many questions. So I'd like to encourage our viewers, if you have any questions as well, to type them into our live chat and we'll bring them up for John to answer. But, yeah, as you were talking, I, I, I did think of a lot of different questions. Um, but mm -hmm. first of all, can you let's talk a little bit about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and why do you think Catholics get intimidated or are very cautious when we're talking about these gifts and miraculous things like prophecy and healing. It's not very Catholic to talk about that. You sound a bit more like it's something that born again Christians will talk about and feel, feel a bit more comfortable. Why do you right. think Catholics don't feel comfortable? Well, my, my, my own experience has been is that, uh, is that many in the people in the church are stagnated. They, go to church on Sunday and they go to hell on Monday. <laughs> now, I mean, I, I am very blunt and very straightforward and uh, I have to be. And, and, and uh, um, because uh, there are a lot of people within our church that, that, that think that the church has changed, but the church has not changed. Because what, what the apostles were given and the disciples of Jesus were given at the time of Pentecost, when they were in the upper room, they were given all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Because if we pray under his name, with his name, is that you will see miracles take place. I mean, I've seen people that that have been dead, and we have prayed for them. It is not us, but it is the word and the power of God and the Holy Spirit that does the healing, does the ministry. Because when we talk, it is God speaking through us, and God touches the heart of each individual. And 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 uh, a lot of people in the church do not want to hear that because they are stuck with tradition, with things that were done maybe 50, 40 years ago, and they uh, are or more ritualistic. And I think my own opinion is that the gospel needs to be prayed from the pulpit not to talk about the Dallas Cowboys or whatever. No, we need to talk about the gospel. The, 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 the people are hungry, and it is not for food that they hunger, but they hunger for the word of God. That is a reason that I see that there are hundreds and thousands of Catholics that have left the Catholic Church because they go to a non-Catholic church where they preach the word of God, they preach in a way that they can understand and they feel fulfilled. And I believe that this is lacking in some other parishes uh, in the Catholic Church, not all of them, because we've got some good holy priests that are not afraid, you know, uh, to call a dog a dog. And, uh, and, and, and many that I've seen are, are afraid to speak the truth. To people because they don't want to offend them and uh, uh, so that uh, uh, I see that uh, uh, many people uh, are very critical of, uh, of, of, of good priests and they are critical of the church because it is not done according to the way that they think and it is out of ignorance and uh, so, so uh, uh, I see many people that want to stick to the uh, the ritual that they used to 
or have experienced in the past and do not want to hear the truth. And, the, and, 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 and what we need to do is to acknowledge that the fruits of the Holy Bible are being manifested today with people that see God. And there are many people that are stubborn and refuse to acknowledge that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. That it is only in his name that miracles happen. And the greatest thing that we have been given, I believe, is not only the Eucharist, which is the real body of Christ. It is not a cracker. No, it is the person of Jesus Christ. And the the the, the chalice is a, is a pure body of Christ. And I have seen healing take place when people believe in their hearts that that's what it is. And I think that we have lost that spirituality within our our own church, and uh, uh, and 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 of course, you know, there are many critics that want to speak the truth. And no, I mean, they have their own committees, their own thing, and their own that. And and what is lacking, I believe, if what the uh, is what the Protestants have done, they have built kononia. They have built communities and people get involved in the church and it grows. And I see is that we have different places within our own parishes, which are incredibly great. And some people are doing a wonderful job, but they are more stuck to doing things mechanical rather than spiritual. Wow. So, uh, John, Jimmy, did you have any questions? Oh, I have some questions for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, first, my first question is yeah. um, a lot of us that are watching you right now would love to, you know, partake somehow in the charismatic renewal, but uh, we don't have anything like that around most of us. Uh, I, I live up in the East Coast of the United States. And it is so liberal that, you know, there is no charismatic renewal, nothing right. anywhere in my region whatsoever. Right. So is this something that, uh, for instance, you were talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, right. Is that something that requires you to lay hands or are you able to pray over it, it, the audience? Right. Uh, Jim, uh, everybody has the fullness of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. All we need to do is to acknowledge and use them. It's, it's very, I mean, it, it is not something that we buy. It is something that is given to us freely at baptism, at confirmation, and in holy orders. And so that uh, uh, I understand what you're saying, because there, there, there are a lot of places that uh, they don't want to hear about prophecy, they don't want to hear about, uh, uh, about about the Holy Spirit because they associate that with Protestants. Right. That's true. We have another question here from Alex, and he's saying, "What are you referring to when you mention ritual?" Okay. Uh, what I what I mean yeah, by by that is that uh, uh, if if uh, uh, we have had people in different parishes that complain to the bishop because the the uh, the uh, the, um, uh, the priests do not do things according to the way that they think, and these are, uh, uh, I mean, I've seen it throughout many parishes, and 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 when I say rituals, you see, ritual is not a bad word if you participate in. What the mass is, is that it is a holy ritual with the presence of God that we fail to recognize that when we go up and receive the person of Jesus, you see, we receive it in our hand. We should just prostrate ourselves because it is the person of Jesus Christ. But how many people would do that? Very few. 
Why? Because they are ashamed of what people would say around them. And, and mm. a ritual is not um, bad, but it can be good because some people are, are caught up in doing things mechanically. That's what I mean by some type of ritual. But the, the whole mass is a ritual towards the, 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 uh, the consecration of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. If we only knew the healing that we receive when Jesus enters into our body, is that we would just prostrate there because it is God. And we fail to realize that. And, and, and uh, uh, we are ignorant of the truth. And, and we are. Because it is not a cracker. It is a person of Jesus. It is a body of Christ. And so that, uh, I mean, uh, when I say ritual, is that when people get away from, from, from uh, uh, um, uh, really celebrating the Mass as, as God and the church wants us to celebrate it. They want to do their own thing. I've seen some places where, uh, I mean, uh, they have dancing and uh, they have uh, 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 clowns or or some other thing that 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 takes away. And what are they trying to do? They are trying to please the people. And the church is for us to revere the presence of God, not to use them as a joke. And many people do that. Some people claim whatever they believe, and I don't condemn anybody because we each have a choice. We have a choice between what is right and what is wrong. I personally know hundreds and thousands of people that when they go to Mass, they have total adoration, total reverence towards the Mass, the Eucharist, and the ceremony that takes place and the, and the passion of Jesus. And some people are too busy uh, watching the Dallas Cowboys or, or whatever. And they use um, um, uh, things as an excuse. One example um, is that uh, is that when I used to teach catechism, is that uh, is that the uh, the Catholic parents made sure that their children went to catechism, but where did the parents went? They went to play golf, and so that uh, the 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 uh, the root of Christianity and the root of us being uh, a, a uh, closer to God is by being involved because it all starts in the family. The family is the Eucharist that God has given us. It is the father, the mother, the son, the daughters, or whatever siblings. When we come together, we become the person of Jesus. So the Lord said, whenever two or three are gathered in my name, I am there with you. And so that Satan right now is trying to destroy the family, is trying to bring confusion to a lot of uh, 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 Catholics that were used to a different type of worship. But I remember one time uh, when I first uh, started and some people would make fun of me. And... Uh, uh, and I told Father Enda, uh, who is my spiritual director, I said, Father, these people, I mean, don't like me. And he told me very, very gently, he said, John, who do you come and why do you come to Mass? To care about what those people think of you or do you come to worship Jesus Christ at Mass? That you come to give all the glory to God. You focus on that and not what people say about you. That is immaterial. And that Satan uses that to, to deviate 
from what is in your heart. Got another question for you. Yep. <laughs> um, earlier, you were talking about how you had a car accident, but then was thrown right back on the road. Yeah. And afterward, a man was banging on your truck. Right. So who was this person? Was this like a Satanist that was trying to get you killed and was angry well, that? Well, was let me. Okay. Uh, let, let me go back uh, from, from the beginning. Um, is that I think that this uh, uh, will, uh, will put it right in its place. Is that I had been searching for God all over to different churches. I went to Curanderos, Witchcraft, I mean, uh, um, all kind of Protestant churches, uh, the, the, the uh, spiritualists, the Masons, and so forth. Until uh, I remember one one night about three o'clock in the morning, is that I was crying on my knees and I was praying and listening to music, and then all of a sudden, I felt a tremendous peace and a cloud of joy and love and forgiveness enter into my room, and the Lord spoke to me, and the Lord asked me if I was willing to, to give myself completely to him. And he asked me if I would take the cup. And, I, and then I knew what the cup was. The cup meant that when I took God into my person, into my soul, is that Satan would come and attack me. And that was the start of my battle with Satan. When I took the cup and I said, come and get it. I was young, out of Vietnam. I wasn't afraid. But throughout the years, is that a lot of people that are very faithful to God are attacked. Why? Because they are doing good for God. And Satan knows all these people. And, and that's, I believe, is one reason that that good people that try to to do good have a lot of problems. It is not that they create it; it is those evil entities. As in Ephesians, uh, it says, "Is that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but powers and principalities." And around us, we that are committed to God, is that a lot of times we don't know what to do. One time I was in a restaurant. I was sitting down and uh, uh, and doing nothing. And there was a man about about three times my size. I'm not a big guy. And uh, I mean, he just walked straight to me. And uh, he, he got the tables uh, and just threw them away and came to me. And he was about five feet from me. And then he ran. He ran and uh, uh, and, I, and I said, oh, my God, I mean, what did I do? But he saw that I was being protected by God's angels. And that's one thing that a lot of us fail to recognize that we have been given protection by, our, by God through our garden angels, through our prayers, through our blessed mother, through our rosary. It is not... It is not an easy life, but it is the only life that will bring peace to each of us. It is the only life that, that God gave us in the Beatitudes. And it is a hard road to walk. That it is. Another question for you. Yes, sir. So your first vision that you had received was actually you were being shown a future refuge down there in Texas. And yes. many of us have heard that there's many throughout the world. Yes. Uh, there's a large one there and you've seen several small, other small ones. Right. It's, okay. Let me. Many of the people are hoping I was going to ask is, are you still, first of all, getting messages and have well, you yeah. any messages about uh, any more about the warning or, or about the future refuge 
refuges that will be coming eventually. Okay, now, um, I don't know if any of you know Father Rob Diorio. Uh, Father uh, Rob Diorio was in the healing ministry in, in the 80s. And uh, uh, um, uh, he took me under his arm uh, and, and I was with him and traveled all over the United States with him. And uh, he was from Boston. And when he left, he said, Juan, I mean, he was Italian. And, uh, um, and but I tell you what, those Italians were tough because when he would see me, I mean, he just go like this on my, uh, I mean, on, on my side, I said, Father, he said, it's because I love you, John. Okay, Father. And uh, so that when he was called by John Paul II, um, uh, when the uh, Iron Curtain went down to go to the uh, uh, Eastern European countries and minister out there, he gave gifts to everybody. And and uh, he came up to me and he said, Juan, you know, which is John, uh, he said, Juan, I don't know what to give you. See, you have, have, have become like my own son. And, uh, um, <clears throat> excuse me. And he said, I can give you the most thing that I, that I treasure. He said, when I was ordained in New York, he said, I was ordained by Archbishop Sheen. And he said, and what I'm giving you is what Archbishop Sheen gave me. And I have Archbishop Sheen's rosary. Now, how did I end up with that? God had to do it. I got it. And uh, uh, so that when we walk in life, we do not know what to ex expect. But always be positive. No matter how dark it seems, there is light with us. And the only way that I know that I can protect myself is to know that I am in control of nothing, but my God, my Lord, and my Savior is in control of all things. And uh, uh, back to the, uh, uh, to the, the refugees, let me tell you how, how uh, uh, this took place. I was praying before the Blessed Sacrament, and in a locution, Our Lady appeared to me. And, uh, uh, and, and I was just praying, and then all of a sudden, is it, it's like I was being drawn uh, away from the earth and pretty close to the moon. And I looked at the earth, and it looked black. I mean, it looked black. I mean, and I asked Our Lady, uh, uh, why was the dark black? And she answered, those, that blackness is a sin of mankind. I said, oh my God. And then we started to descend down back. And as we were coming back, I noticed that there were lights. And, and I asked our lady what those lights were. And she told me, those are the refuge that I have already prepared for my people, for that which is to come. And so that in Texas, I saw um, um, a, a large refuge, and they're not small. Uh, 300 by 300 square miles was one. I saw one up in, uh, 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 around Montana, Indiana, and around Alabama. And I saw two in in uh, uh, in Canada, and then all over the world. And 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 what I asked, and what and what and, and what our, our lady showed me, she took me inside the refuge, and I saw that there were thousands and thousands of men and women praying consistently, and they were all working to bring people and to help people that were coming into the refuge. And then Our Lady uh, just looked up and I saw that there were angels. They were carrying like basilicas. They were carrying holy articles, churches into the refuge. 
Now, the 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 uh, the refuge exists, but we cannot see them because they are invisible. It is like a dome that is protected so that so that no evil can penetrate into them. And uh, uh, and the reason for that is that I assume is that when uh, uh, when God promised Noah that the world would never experience a flood, that it would be like fire. So that the refuge, I believe, is that once everybody is inside, and there were many that are going to be mortared outside, uh, is that then the angels of God are going to put fire to the whole planet and destroy all evil. Now, that is what I saw. Uh, and, and the purpose of the refuge. It does not matter where you're at. You can have a refuge in your own home. But at the, when a time comes, God's angels will take your little refuge and put it inside the Lord's refuge. And when I saw what? those... Yes, sir, I'm sorry. I was just saying, one person has asked, what if we don't know where there is a refuge? I'm sorry? Uh, someone's you... asked, what if we don't know where there is a refuge? If, what oh, do we I do? Mean, uh, you, you, don't, you don't have to know. In, in, you know, because, uh, I mean, a lot of people um, um, uh, want to know where the refuge are. They, they are there. But when the time comes, we will all have a knowing and knowing without understanding where to go. God is a powerful God. And those that cannot walk, those that might be sick, is that the angels would carry them into the refuge. If we try to look for them, you will not find them. But they are already in existence. I had read that uh, from many other visionaries that many people's guardian angels will guide them to places of refuge. Yes, that is uh, correct. That and, is correct. And pretty much when when you are called to go there, you are going to be only taking what you could carry on your back. So exactly. all the material things that you have collected mm -hmm. over your life, you're going to say goodbye to that. Right. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I mean, uh, of course, you know, I, I mean, you're not going to take your... Um, uh, Nintendo set in there. No, uh, uh, you, you, uh, uh, I mean, what is in your heart is what you will take, and there is food, there, there is everything inside the refuge, it's already there, but it is, it, it is hard to, to understand, but of course, we cannot understand the power of God. A good example for those that are aware of uh, of uh, Hiroshima, when the atomic bomb was uh, was uh, dropped in in Hiroshima, and this is how Satan works. Hiroshima had the most populated Catholics in Japan, and that's where the bomb hit. And what happened is that there were twelve German priests praying the rosary in their little church. And there were uh, just a few blocks from ground zero and nothing happened to them. Scientists were stunned that they didn't have any radiation. They studied them for years and they were protected by the grace of God. Right. They were praying the rosary. Yes, they were praying the rosary. See, people pray the rosary. Yes, exactly. You know, I, I, I mean, it is um, uh, uh, that is the key because a lot of us, you know, uh, 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 do that. But but how many people listen to the messages of Our Lady at La Salette, at Fatima? And some people ha have a question about, Gar uh, about Garabandal, but Cardinal Ratzinger said that it's open. The church has not made a decision, but what was shared there is taking place right now. 
which is the same message that was given in Akita. And and, and yeah, I was and, going to um, I was going to actually mention Akita before you brought it up because that was one of the uh, messages from Akita is that fire will fall down from the sky, and that yes. the people that survived the chastisement will wish that they were dead. And, yes, um, you were saying that you were just saying that you believe that fire will fall down from the sky. Do you think that's going to be in the form of like a natural disaster or nuclear weapons or what? What do you feel? Well, I, I mean, um, that's that's one thing that uh, that that we cannot speculate because we can come up with um, uh, uh, we can rationalize, but there is a difference between. Let me give you an example. We live in two worlds. Regardless, we live in the natural and then we live in the supernatural. In the natural, it has limitations. But in the supernatural, there are no limitations. And so that we focus and we need to live in two worlds, but we need to put more focus in the supernatural, which is the Holy Spirit, God the Father, got the son and 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 our lady you know i mean all of heaven is in the supernatural and so that if we try to focus and a lot of times it's not easy it is it is not easy and if and and like i uh, and like i mentioned before is that on the on the refuge there there will be all over the world And if you try to um, look for them, John, you, yes, sir. Sorry, sorry to cut you off. There's some people that are interested in getting in touch with you to ask some personal questions. How, how can they do that? Uh, uh, do you have a website? Uh, or? They can they can email me, uh, which is the best way. Um, I mean, I've given my phone number, but I tell you what, I mean, I get so many calls, and 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 and. And I would rather that they just email me, uh, and 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 my uh, um, uh, email is my email is John Martinez J O H N M A R T I N E Z, and then one nine five two at B Creek. It's like B like a bumblebee. B E E C R E E K dot net. John, if you'd like, I could probably put it onto the. Uh, oh yes, board. yes, uh, Jim, uh, uh, Ron, I, I, I want to tell you, Jim, is like a brother to me. I love this guy. I mean, he is. I mean, he and I have gone through hell. <laughs> Excuse uh, my vocabulary, but hey, you know, it, it, it's, it's that's what it is. I mean, we gotta face reality. And uh, uh, and when we do things for God, expect what I drank out of that cup. It's going to come after you. But it has no power over you. None. Just the mention of the word Jesus or Mary, all these entities will, 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 will fly away. But you've got to say it in faith. Just put your email on the screen as well, John. So if anyone wants to contact you, that it's on the screen right now. Oh, oh yes. Great. Oh, I love that dog too. <laughs> <laughs> so, John. John um, go ahead. Go, go on. Go on, Jim. I, rem I remember one time you had told me that you had seen the miracle of the sun. Yes. Um, uh, where what was going on when that happened? You know, well, I, I mean, uh, like, like I said, in in my life, things have happened with with me, looking for them, or expecting them. It just happens. Like I was driving uh, up. Uh, I live in Texas. Uh, I was I was driving from San Antonio to uh, uh, Johnson City. And then I stopped the car because, I mean, I saw that the sun was pulsating. And 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 uh, 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 
and I couldn't figure it out. But then I remembered Fatima. I remember in Metagorgia what what happens, and uh, uh, it's it's a gift now, now because I can look at the sun and nothing. My eyes don't hurt. What I see is a Eucharist just in the center of the hound and of, of, of the sun to keep my eyes from being burned. Now, I never expected that. Yeah, I, I hope well, someday I'll get to see that. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. <laughs> so, John, have uh, you ever... Ask... Yes. Sorry, Jim, you, you continue and I'll ask my question later. Oh, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. Otherwise, I'll keep babbling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some people have asked about receiving the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Should we desire these gifts? Should we pray for them? Is it good for people to ask for these gifts of the Holy Receive. Spirit? Um, can you give us some insight about that? Yes. Uh, you see, it's like, uh, um, I mean, um, uh, each of us have red blood, correct? In <laughs> our bodies. Yep. Okay. Yes. The Holy Spirit is already there. All you have to do is to release it. I mean, you can pray, yes, but we all have the Holy Spirit. When the priest anoints us at baptism, anoints us in confirmation, is that the Holy Spirit is there. But in the charismatic renewal, what happens is that we pray for the release of the Holy Spirit, and that is when the gifts start to be manifested. Is this something you could pray over us, or do we oh, have yeah. to go to one of those meetings? Oh yes, right. Uh, it's it's not a problem. You see, uh, uh, the 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 uh, the Word of God is 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 so powerful that uh, it doesn't have borders. I remember a uh, 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 one time at our uh, at one of our prayer groups here in San Antonio that that a friend came over and uh, uh, and told me that his brother was dying in Chicago, which was about two thousand miles from here, and that if we could pray for his brother because his liver was just gone, and so that in in faith being that far away. We pray and uh, that the Lord would just restore and to heal his his liver. Six months later, he walked into our prayer group and told us at that same moment, his liver had been healed. Now, how do you explain that? It's supernatural. It's not natural. Yep. And, yeah, definitely. And, and so that what, what we need to do, I believe, is that we need to put our faith in God, not in politics, not in whatever, you know, but only in the person of Jesus Christ, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Our Lady, Our Lady is our biggest advocate. Someone here was asking if you had any messages or prophecies about a comet. I'm trying to about look for it. Well, <laughs> I, I, in, 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 in scripture, uh, I, I believe that uh, um, I think it's the in the book, book of Revelations. Of, yeah, uh, book of Revelations. It, it speaks about a mountain that is coming from the sky. It mm. does. And that uh, it it will fall to earth. Um, uh, I just read on uh, I just read on uh, Spirit Daily is that there was some kind of an object that was coming towards Earth, but it's millions of miles away, or billions of miles away. And uh, uh, and and when it happens, nobody knows. Nobody, anybody that that tells you that. That he knows, I mean, <clears throat> no, he's crazy. <laughs> because Jesus said, oh. uh, um, I mean, Jesus, but asked by the apostles, when are these things going to happen? He said, 
he told them, he said, I don't know because only the father knows the time. And so that we cannot second guess, but if we read scripture and take it to heart, and when we read it, we, uh, we need to subject ourselves to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us. And he does. It doesn't matter if you're Chinese, Mexican, or, or Ukrainian. He speaks to you in whatever language. John, before we conclude with um, a prayer, we'll ask you to pray for our intentions and the intentions of all the people watching. But yes. um, I'm interested in finding out a bit more about your insight on the warning or the illumination of conscience. I know that some people have actually experienced it before in yes. their lives. Um, have you had any mm -hmm. similar experiences or do you know? Can oh, you yes. give us some insight on what, what you think will happen or what God has, you yes. feel that God's revealed to you? Yeah. Right. What I mean, uh, we have no idea when it's going to happen, but it is going to happen. Uh, and 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 uh, but one of the things is that we need to be very careful because people that give days because I, I remember in in the eighties when people spoke about the three days of darkness and a lot of people sold their homes and and uh, uh, and they were waiting and 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 it never happened and so that on the warning. And uh, the the illumination of conscience, when it comes, it it'll come in a twinkle of an eye, and everybody on earth, other than some children, um, will experience it. And we we uh, uh, with with God, there is no time. Anybody that tells it's going to happen this and that, be careful. But we need to pre pre prepare ourselves for what is coming. It's day by day, not week by week, but moment by moment. I hope that I did not confuse any of you guys. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Thank you so much. Um, Jim, would you like to... Do you have any final comments? You want to talk to us a little bit about what's happening on your website before we conclude with uh, a prayer from John? Well, uh, I'm not ready yet, but in the next few weeks, I'm going to have a, a new feature on the website. Um, last year, I was given permission to uh, bring uh, to copy onto the website the visions and uh, messages from Luisa Picaretta. And I oh, decided wow. it was too big to po put on there. So instead, I was, I'm was i going to be adding a feature where every day it will have a reading from there. So every day will be a next one in the hopes that eventually we'll all have been able to read it. And there's so many blessings attached to this. So working on it, you know, it's it's taken me months. And I, I said it over, almost nine months ago. I was like, oh, I can get this up and running. And oh, my gosh, it is so much. <laughs> 35 or 36 volumes and trying to put this in there it's unreal and i know that that's part wow. of the reason why i've been constantly getting attacked here is because you know even in the in those readings it, it says you know satan hates anyone who deals with those messages so just letting you all know expect it in a few weeks hopefully if so they're going well. to be daily messages from louisa picaretta yeah i'm I, what i'm going to have it do is like every day it will go to the next message. I think I'm going to skip the first two because they were like their own books. They were so large. So I'm going to start at like message three and every day it'll put a next one up so that every day you go to the site, you can click and read at least a small part of that book to get through yeah. Louisa Picaretta's right, message. So oh, I'm sure a lot of people will love that. That's awesome. Yeah. I didn't even tell my and wife. Again, um, the first time. <laughs> I've been working on that <laughs> because every time Sounds I try great. to do something, we get uh, bombarded. So, and everyone but, that's watching, if you would like to support um, Jim and his website, afterthewarning.com, 
Well, the best way to do that will be going to the website itself and and um, making a donation. We know that you know you're struggling to. It's been a how long has it been? Thirty year ministry, and we need we need to support. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy, as much as possible. So, if you would like to support Jimmy and his website to keep it up and running, please, um, you know, make a donation or or say a prayer. I know that you don't like asking for donations, Jimmy. So. Oh, I hate it. I would love to take off that stinking button on my website. It was John that actually <laughs> told you know him and my wife. And my wife said I should do it. And John said, you need to do this. You need to put that donation button on there. And I didn't want to. He he forced me, him and my wife forced <laughs> my hands to put that there. And I we needed it, but I hate it. Oh, I probably get that from my dad. <laughs> He's, he's, he could support oh. himself perfectly, and I wanted to be just like him, but I struggle. And it seems the more I do to this website and the more I talk with John, the worse things seem to get here. So, <laughs> <laughs> and John could attest to how, how that goes. Okay, so, um, John, we might get you to, to wrap up with any okay. final thoughts and prayers and uh, thanks well, so much, Jimmy, again for coming on, and we'll probably come back on again in a okay, fortnight. I or think there, time. <laughs> there, there is so much to share, Ron, and 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 uh, uh, and I believe that those that are watching have a lot of questions, and I'll be more than happy to answer the best that I can, and. Uh, uh, the Lord told me that whenever I speak, it is he that is speaking through me. And so that uh, uh, um, uh, one of the things that I, that I want to pray for, for those that are listening, I ask them to put their right hand on their heart. And I want to give them the gifts, all the gifts that God has given me. Because a gift is not a gift until you give it away. And Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father God, for your blessings of my brothers and sisters, Lord God, that are seeking the truth. I ask you, Lord God, that you bring healing to whatever member of their family, Lord, is, is struggling with sickness, Lord, depression, or or whatever it may be, Father. It, it is through the Holy Spirit, Father, that I speak forth healing, and I give them, Father, the gifts that you have given to me, whether they are in China, Ukraine, it doesn't matter, because you are as far from us as a son of our heartbeat. I ask you that you bless Ron, and that you bless my brother Jim, and that this broadcast will go worldwide, Father, so that the whole world will be able to acknowledge and receive the person of Jesus into their life. And that there will be peace in their hearts and in their families and in their struggles that they are going with. And I ask our Blessed Mother to place her mantle around each family, around each person that is listening to our words, Father. I believe it, Father, and I just pray it, and I ask you, Lord God, for you said that whatever we ask you, in the name of Jesus, that you would give it to us. And I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, to bless everyone that is listening. And those that are not listening, Lord God, just touch them and change them. Let us be humble and may peace be with all of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.